Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to see so many people here interested in our research. And as Sue said, I, I was, I'm a researcher in her lab, and as the last year or so, I've been starting to focus more and more on how to translate Garvin's research, including our epigenetic research, into products that can have a direct impact on, on our health. But today I'll talk about the, my um, fundamental research looking at the epigenome, particularly in metabolic disease, but obesity. So why is obesity bad? It's not bad because it makes us fat and how we look. It's bad because it's associated with many diseases. And a lot of us are familiar with its association with type 2 diabetes and heart disease, but it's also associated with cancer risk, mood disorders, reproductive disorders, many disorders. So it's a, it's a big problem and it's getting worse. So these are data from the US, but you can see this upward slope here. In the 1960s, around 10% of US adults were obese. It's projected that by 2030, around 50% of adults will be obese. And that's really scary. And it's not just the Americans. The World Health Organization has said this has increased worldwide. So worldwide obesity has, has almost tripled since 1975. So obesity is increasing, but why is that? Part of it is the, a change in the environment. So we know that the availability of energy-dense energy foods are much, are much more accessible. It's much more easy to get a can of Coke these days, I think, than 50 years ago. Also, the need for physical activity has reduced. And basically, if you're having more energy coming in than you're expending going out, you put on weight, and as this increases, you can become obese. However, in this shared environment, not everyone becomes obese. So there's also a, a part of predisposition. And we're particularly interested in um, what predisposes individuals to metabolic disease and obesity. So a lot of this predisposition we inherit from our parents. In fact, uh, um, our risk or of a particular BMI, our body mass index, is highly heritable. And our BMI is basically a ratio that we use to assess whether an individual is counted as lean, overweight, or obese. It's not a perfect ratio, but it's widely used. And it's calculated by having our weight in kilograms divided by our height in meters squared. <coughs> so heritability is really important in, in, in a sense, our risk of developing obesity. It's thought that heritability explains 40 to 70% of our likelihood of becoming obese which basically means lean parents are more likely to have children that will grow up to be lean, and obese parents are more likely to have obese ch or children that will grow up to be obese. However, if you think back to that curve, which is increasing, clearly this heredity is not, or this, this predisposition is not being passed across perfectly. Um, and this change is not due to, gen due to genetics. So we, this, there's not a, a genetic change in the underlying um, predisposition because genes just don't change that quickly. So genetics is, or, and inheritance is part of the picture, environment is part of the picture, but it's not the whole picture. And in trying to understand what can explain everything, we are starting to realise that it's really important to understand how our genes, so the genes and our genome that we inherit from our parents, interacts with our environment. And this interaction is modulated by the epigenome. So by understanding all of these things, it can give us insight into our particular phenotype. And this phenotype that we're discussing here is whether we're obese, whether we're lean, or whether we're somewhere in between. Now this is important as adults and it's important all through our life, but as Ksenia really pointed out, what happens early in life is particularly important. And there's a lot of data showing um, that early environment exposure has a big impact on later life health. And I'll talk just around the nutritional side of this, but <coughs> many studies have shown that Differential nutrient exposure in pregnancy can lead to an altered risk of obesity, diabetes, and other metabolic diseases later in life, just as Ksenia outlined. And in some of these studies, we're getting a better sense that perhaps one of the driving forces is epigenetic changes around particular genes. And these epigenetic changes uh, can turn a gene off or on, and this can lead to an increase in risk. So epigenetics is an important mechanism in, in driving this process. So as Ksenia mentioned, maternal nutrition can have an impact on obesity and, and mortality risk in the adult offspring and the second generation. And interestingly, the Dutch winter famine study that Ksenia also mentioned in which pregnant mothers were basically starved. Their children were at a higher risk of metabolic disease. But on the other end of the spectrum, women that are obese when they're pregnant, their children are also at a high risk for metabolic disease. 
So basically, if you're, if you're undernourished or overnourished while pregnant, this can have a big impact on your child's likelihood of developing metabolic disease. And within all, all of these studies, um, or all of these, these types of studies, we see associated epigenetic changes. Many of these studies have focused on blood as a tissue because it's easily accessible, but blood's not particularly metabolically active. And many of the studies have looked at particular regions. So we wanted to understand how the epigenome and metabolic disease um, worked a little bit better. So we focused on um, how the epigenome varied in, in adults, obese, comparing obese individuals with lean individuals, and we focus on a particularly metabolically active tissue, which is fat. And in this study, we focused on DNA methylation. So Sue mentioned that this is when you have the methyl groups added to, to the Cs in our, our DNA. And we compared lean versus obese individuals. We took subcutaneous fat, which is the fat just under our skin. And this fat is considered to be relatively benign, and in fact, in some cases, potentially protective for health. We also took visceral fat, which is the fat around our organs. And visceral fat can be seen as the bad fat. So if you have excess visceral fat, this is associated with disease risk. We also took blood to compare to some of the other studies. And interestingly, when we looked at the DNA methylation between lean individuals and obese individuals across these three sample types, tissue types, we found that for subcutaneous fat and blood, we actually saw very few differences. So in these tissues, you don't see much of a difference between a lean individual and an obese individual. But if you look at the bad fat, the visceral fat, we saw lots of differences. And this 99% of all the differences we saw were in visceral fat. And this is the fat that's associated with disease. So in, a, in a, an individual that becomes obese, we're expecting to see differences in their epigenome, and this is the, the tissue that's, that potentially is driving some of the illnesses associated with obesity. So I'll leave, <coughs> I'll leave it there, but I'll just um, leave you with three final points to remember from the talk. So understanding the epigenome is very important in understanding obesity and metabolic disease, and it gives us insight into this gene-environment interaction. That the early fetal environment is important in later life health, and we know that the epigenome is, is in part a mechanism that's reinforcing and driving this. And from our own research, it's clear that the epigenome of, of bad fat, visceral fat, is different between a lean individual and an obese individual. And this helps support the role of the epigenome in underlying metabolic health. Thank you.